best tips for installing mini splits. Today, I'm going to show you a mini split system that we just finished installing. And if you've never installed a mini split, I'm going to talk to you about the best tips that you can know for installing mini splits. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. First tip, if you have a line set, which is the copper piping that connects the outdoor to the indoor head that's less than 10 foot, roll up the line sets. This is going to reduce the amount of noise you have. That's tip number one. Second tip, before you open these valves using your Allen tool, you need to make sure that you pressure test your line sets with nitrogen. You need to at least use 300 PSIG. You need to take soap, bubbles, you need to get a spray bottle, some type of leak tester to be able to test and make sure you don't have any leaks at your flare connections. Using a torque wrench to tighten these flare connections is going to help you reduce those leaks. But you have to make sure you pressure test with nitrogen and use a vacuum pump to vacuum out the lines before you use the Allen tool to open up these valves because this releases the refrigerant into the line sets and into those indoor wall mount air handler heat exchangers. Tip number three, when you're installing a mini split, you need to know how far your indoor unit is from your outdoor unit. So each indoor unit, I'll have a different size line set length. So they come in 25 foot or 50 foot and line sets is the copper right here. Okay, you got a vapor and a liquid line. So your liquid lines are always, always your smaller line. Your vapor line is always your bigger line. This is three eighths and quarter inch. And it also comes with your communication cable, okay, right here, and your power cable. That is the third tip. Tip number four, make sure you have a good flaring tool. This is a flaring tool made by Spin Products. This is what I use. I put it in my drill and it's easy to make a new flare. Why do you need this? Because sometimes your flares need to be redone on your line sets that you get. Either they're too thin, the walls are too thin on the flare, or sometimes the flares are cracked. So you need to make sure you inspect your flares and get a good flaring tool. Here's a link to the one that I use. Tip number five, make sure that you use line hide cover to cover up your line sets and your drain. If you're using a drain tube other than PVC, if the sun is hitting your drain tube, that, that flimsy, uh, flexible drain tube, some of those drain tubes will deteriorate with the sun hitting it all year round. So using line hide cover is going to protect your line sets. It's going to protect your drain pipe. And it's also going to look better. So make sure you use line hide cover because it just looks better. It's four inch by four inch. It's got plenty of room for you to hide those line sets. And then also you need to make sure you know the different types of line hide cover. This is a hole cover. So this covers the hole that we have to drill from the inside to outside to actually run our line sets through the exterior of the house. Tip number six, you need a quarter inch to five sixteenths adapter to be able to connect your gauges, your hose to the service valve. This is a quarter inch by five sixteenths adapter. Why do we need that? Because our gauges have a quarter inch connection and it will not work. See, it will not go on there. There's the link for the adapter. Tip number seven, each wall mount air handler should be mounted level or pitched to the side where the drain exits the indoor wall mount air handler. Why? Because you want to make sure that you don't have a drain problem where your water's pouring down the wall because it's staying inside the pan. So I'll show you the drain exits on the right side. So we're going to pitch that unit like this to the right side or just make sure that it's level. All right, that's tip number seven. Tip number eight, whenever you're checking the charge and you're using your gauges on this equipment, during the heating mode, when the unit's running in the heat mode, you wanna use this hose, the red hose, and the red gauge, because this is the larger vapor line, and this is the vapor gas uh, suction valve, basically, the suction line service valve. 
So in the heating mode, this line is gonna become hot and the pressure is gonna be over 300, sometimes around 400. And you can see this gauge doesn't go up that high. So you wanna use this gauge, the red high side gauge, and the red high side hose when you're measuring the pressure in the heating mode. During the cooling mode, you're gonna use the blue hose on this port and the blue gauge, right? The low side gauge and the low side hose because this line is gonna become cold during the cooling operation or the cooling mode. And it's not gonna have a pressure over uh, 200. It's gonna be probably in between 100 and 150. Step number nine, really simple. Just read the installation manual for the equipment you're installing. Why? Because not only will this give you steps that can make your install go a lot smoother and you do a lot better job, but it also gives you information for troubleshooting. So if you run into a problem, you'll know what to do. Step number 10, make sure that you look at the service facts on the unit. And what you wanna look for is you wanna look for something called MOP, right? MOP is 25 for this unit. And since this is a 230 volt unit, that means it uses a double pole breaker. 110 uses a single pole. So now we know what size breaker we need, right? We're not using MCA, which is minimum, circ minimum circuit amps. We're using the MOP to know. So I'm gonna show you the breaker. It should be a 25 amp double pole breaker that powers this unit. Here's our breaker and it's a double pole, right? And it's a 25. That's really important. And for you to be able to pass an electrical inspection, you got to make sure that you have the right size breaker. Now I'm going to give you some general advice for installing mini splits because I just gave you 10 tips, but I'm going to give you some more. Make sure that your disconnect is either above the unit or beside the unit. Make sure that the unit is not blocking the disconnect. That way you can actually open it. Also, I like to use non-fuse disconnects. That means it doesn't have fuses. Why? Because I have a breaker inside. My breaker is my protection device just in case there's something that happens uh, with the equipment or lightning happens, anything like that. That is my protection. This right here is just a service disconnect. This is for me to be able to service the equipment and be able to quickly uh, pull the power and uh, de-energize the equipment. Always gravity drain if you can. If you cannot gravity drain, meaning the drain doesn't go right outside and down, that means you have to have a condensate pump. That means more maintenance. That means more of a chance of having water run down your wall. I don't like using condensate pumps. I don't have, like having those accessories in the equipment because then that's more maintenance for me and something else that I have to replace two or three, maybe four or five years down the road. Gravity drain is the best. And that way you only have to shot vac or clean out the drain once a year annually. And that will help you to reduce the chance of you having water pour down your wall because the drain stopped up. If you have 220 power, use a 220 volt mini split instead of a 110 volt. Why? Because the components are going to be able to use that 220 more efficiently. So it's not that the equipment's going to be more efficient and save more energy. It's that the components are going to be able to run more efficiently with the 220 volt power. Anytime you've got a wall mount air handler and you've got some line sets that are going to be run inside the room, make sure you use line hide cover to cover it up. Don't just have the line sets showing on the wall because that doesn't look good. So use line hide cover whenever you can. Before or after you install your mini split, make sure you check the power that is going to the mini split. Turn your meter to volts AC and check your incoming power. Like this, L1 and L2, 250 volts. Let me explain why. These mini splits are made in a country where they use 208 volts. We use 230, so the power is much higher. Now, anything over, I'm pretty sure, 260, 260 volts, you're gonna cause damage to the components that make up the mini split. One of them, which is an inverter board. And you don't want to risk damaging the inverter board because that's what powers the compressor and the fan motor. So you may need to get a line voltage monitor. ICM Controls makes an ICM 493. I've got a video on it. Video is right here, click that link.
you can learn more about a line voltage monitor, which can protect your mini split from high voltages. If you don't know how to use a flaring tool or different types of flaring tools, here's a video right here for you to learn more about the different types of flaring tools and how to use them. That's all the tips I've got for you in today's video. I hope you liked the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. I hope you learned something in today's video. If you did, let me know in the comments what you learned. If you've got any questions, put those down below in the comments. If you don't have any questions, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.